Okay, good afternoon guys. I hope you already had your lunch. As um, promised earlier, we will still, uh, we're still here in the cost of uh, capital discussion. And uh, we said earlier that uh, determining the cost of capital is important because this actually serves as the uh, hurdle rate for companies. If say, for example, they would uh, you know, um, have a project. So the project should earn a rate of return that is more than the uh, hurdle rate or the cost of capital because if not then the project may not be worth it okay or worth undertaking by the company now the weighted average cost of capital here would come out if the company employs different sources of funds in order to uh, to finance uh, a particular project so in this case if uh, the company employs um, more than one source of capital uh, as a source of funding, then we have to get the weighted average cost of capital, okay? Which is actually getting the proportion or contribution of each, like the creditors, the bank creditors, the equity shareholders, and of course the preference shareholders, okay? Getting the uh, proportional um, contribution of each uh, of each uh, party, okay? Now I have here a, a simple, simple exercise for the computation of the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so here, the company, uh, the company has an optimal capital structure that is 70% common, 20% uh, debt, and 10% preference share, or preferred shares. This pre-tax cost of equity is 9%, and um, preference is seven, and uh, debt is five. If the corporate tax rate is 30%, what is the weighted average cost of capital? Okay, so the computation in this case of the cost of capital is very much uh, straightforward because we are already given the contribution of each uh, party in the uh, funding of the project, okay? So we have here the common, we have the preference, and we have the creditor, okay? Now the common shares account for 70% of the total capital. The preference shares accounts for 20%. And then the, um, sorry, the preference share is 10%, sorry. And then 20% is for the liability, okay? Now, um, the cost of each is also given, so you have uh, cost of equity, 9%, okay, so this is 9%. Now, cost of preferred, uh, preferred, uh, preferred shares is 7%. Now, and the pre-tax cost of debt is 5%. You know for a fact that when it comes to cost of debt, okay, there is a formula, which is, okay, so we have the um, yield multiplied by the 1 minus the tax rate. And this is so because the interest payments are tax deductible, okay? So therefore here, the yield here is 5%. 5% yield minus one, uh, sorry, multiplied by one minus the tax rate of 30. So therefore, what we will have here is 0 0.05 times 0.70, that is 3.5. So this is now your cost of debt, so times 3.5, okay? So it's pretty much straightforward. We just have to multiply the three components and add them all up, and that will be the weighted average cost of capital. So this is 6.3%, and then 0.10 times 0 0.07, that would be 0.7%. And then 0.2 times 0 0.035, that would be 0.7%. And so therefore, the weighted average cost of capital is that 7.7%. So what is the importance of the 7.7%? If the company will undertake a project that would generate revenue for the company, the rate of return on the project should be more than 7.7% because this represents the cost of the capital or the financing, uh, the, course of the cost of funds, okay, used by the company for that specific project. So if the project would not make a return higher than 7.7%, 7 
then the project may not be worth it for the company. Okay, so that's a very simple problem for the weighted average cost of capital. Okay, let us now move on to the next topic, which is about this component, okay, which is the cost of debt. Now, for the cost of debt, we said that the formula uh, uh, for the cost of debt, we are actually using the market value. Now, remember when we have com when we computed for the issue price of the bonds, okay, we take out all the uh, interest payments and, of course, the principal payments, and we discounted all of them using the uh, effective or the market rate. So, therefore, the issue price is actually the market value or the market price of the bonds. Okay. So, for the cost of debt, what we will do is we will use the market, um, the effective or the yield. Okay multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So this is the very, a very simple formula for the cost of debt. Again, the reason for this is that the, the interest payments are all tax deductible, okay? Unlike um, for the cost of equity, like uh, ec um, common and preference shares, the dividends are not tax deductible, okay? So let's have an example for this one. Okay, let us assume that, sorry, not that one. The coupon rate of a debt issue is 6%. If the yield to maturity of the debt is 9% and after tax cost of debt is in the weighted average cost of capital, is if the firm's tax rate is um, 30%. Let me repeat that, sorry. The coupon rate on a debt issue is 6%. Now, if the yield to maturity of the debt is 9%, what is the ta after tax cost of debt? in the weighted average cost of capital if the firm's tax rate is 30%. So going back to our formula here, we can just substitute. Now remember, I said that we are not after the nominal rate. What we will use is the effective or the market rate. So therefore, cost of capital is, remember that the yield to maturity is 9%. So that is 9% multiplied by 1 minus 0.3. Okay, so therefore, the cost of that is 9% multiplied by, this is essentially 0.7. I don't want to commit mistake, so 0.7, that would be 6.3. So the cost of that for this problem, okay, so we got the yield to maturity, which is 9%, okay, minus the, minus, uh, multiplied by 1, minus the tax rate of 30, we will get the 6.3 cost of debt. Next one. Okay. The coupon rate on an issue of debt is 6%. Again, that is the nominal interest. The yield to maturity on this issue is 8%. The corporate is uh, 30%. What would be the approximate after tax cost of debt for the new issue of the bonds? Okay. Going back here for our computation, so therefore the cost of debt is Again, the yield to maturity for this issue is 8% multiplied by 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So therefore, that would be 0 0.08 times 0 0.7. That would be 5.6%. So this is the cost of debt. So it's pretty much a straightforward computation. Okay, let's have some theories. The cost of firms debt is determined by taking the... Okay. So what is the answer for this? Remember, the cost of the firm's debt. So therefore, the answer there is yield on the bond issued minus the corporation's marginal tax rate. That is letter C. Because remember, we are using the, the yield, not the nominal interest. The pre-tax cost of debt for a new debt, for a new issue of debt is determined by, again, the yield to maturity of outstanding or comparable bonds. Okay, another um, computational part. ABC Corporation has an after-tax cost of debt of 4.5 with a tax rate of 30%. What is the yield on the debt? So here, we are given the, uh, the cost of debt, okay, and then the tax rate. So what we are being asked to compute is the yield, this portion of the formula. Okay, so here, 
what we'll do is the cost of that a 4.5 percent is equal to uh, x okay and then 0.7 so therefore multiply this you will have 0.7 of x sorry uh, okay divide this by 0 0.7 so that will be 4.5 divided by 0 0.7 sorry, 0 0.045 0.7 so that would be 6.4 Okay, so that's, that's it. Okay, so here, Tobin's Barbecue Bank has a bank loan. Barbecue has a bank loan of 8% interest and an after-tax co cost of debt of 6%. What will the ta after-tax cost of debt be if a new loan is taken out, yielding 11%? Okay, so what will be your answer for this? I will leave this and will answer this uh, in the next video. Thank you very much.